celebration of Holy Eucharist Rite 1 for Friday in the third week of Lent begins with the penitential order, page 319 in the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Hosea. Israel, come back to Yahweh your God. Your iniquity was the cause of your downfall. Provide yourself with words and come back to Yahweh. Say to him, take all iniquity away so that we may have happiness again and offer you our words of praise. Assyria cannot save us. We will not ride horses anymore or say, our God, to what our own hands have made. For you are the one in whom orphans find compassion. I will heal their disloyalty. Stand dismayed, farmers. Wail, you vine dressers. For the wheat, for the barley, for the harvest of the field has been ruined. The vine has withered. The fig tree wilts away. I will love them with all my heart, for any anger has turned from them. I will fall like dew on Israel. He shall bloom like the lily, and thrust out roots like the poplar. His shoots will spread far. He will have the beauty of the olive and the fragrance of Lebanon. They will come back to live in my shade. They will grow corn that flourishes. They will cultivate vines, as renowned as the vines of Lebanon. What has Ephraim to do with idols anymore, when it is I who hear his prayer and care for him? I am like a cypress, evergreen. All your fruitfulness comes from me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to thee, O Lord. One of the scribes who had listened to them debating and had observed how well Jesus had answered them now came up and put a question to him. 
which is the first of all commandments? Jesus replied, this is the first. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well spoken, master, what you have said is true, that he is one and there is no other. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. This is far more important than any holocaust or sacrifice. Jesus, seeing how wisely he had spoken, said, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to question him anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Jesus, it seems, usually goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the scribes. They are painted as, as adversaries and opponents throughout the Gospel. But here is one rare instance where a scribe answered wisely, spoke wisely. Jesus, seeing how wisely he had spoken, said, You are not far from the kingdom of God. I wonder what that scribe thought about that, to hear Jesus answer him in this way, the scribe's affirmation, of course, of Jesus' own answer. And as the scribe asked this question of Jesus, what is the great commandment, in Mark's gospel, it really is not a test, it's not a trap. Jesus is in the midst of gotcha questions that he swats away one after another. This doesn't seem to be one of those. This seems to be the rare scribe, perhaps, who wishes to gain understanding, to engage Jesus in conversation rather than to engage him in some kind of verbal tussle. And because this scribe went into this conversation with Jesus seeking understanding, the scribe was given understanding. He heard Jesus' answer to his well-meaning question, and the scribe could do nothing but agree, the scribe being a scholar, a student of the scriptures, every bit as much as Jesus was. And the scribe and the Savior were in agreement. Are we and the Savior in agreement? It's always a question we ask ourselves. It certainly is a question that we ask ourselves in Lent. Are we in agreement with the Word of God? Not just Scripture, but the Word made flesh. Are we in agreement with Jesus as he is revealed in the sacrament of the Eucharist? Are we in agreement with the Savior? Much of the time, I expect yes. Every once in a while, I suspect no. But it's the Savior who always engages us in conversation. And when we approach the Savior in confrontation, when we approach him as an adversary, he will continue to answer us. The answers may be stymieing for us. We may not understand them clearly. But when we approach the Savior not as an adversary, but as a friend, as a wise teacher, as, as we understand, God incarnate, then the answers that the Savior gives, while they may be difficult for us to comprehend, they are answers that are good and helpful and holy for us. And in turn, we answer wisely to the Savior who speaks wisdom to us. May we hear with the ears of our hearts the Savior say to us, you are not far from the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world, responding, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications 
and to give thanks for all people. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church and the vestry staff and people of this parish with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Skip, our assisting bishop, Dan, our rector, and Joseph, our seminarian, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present in person and online, that with meek hearts and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, President of the United States, Gretchen, Governor of Michigan, and Sheldon, Mayor of Flint, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph the Worker, her spouse, St. Paul the Apostle, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Spirit. Thank you. Good morning. It's good for the church to be together. We are not far from the kingdom of God. As I prepare the altar for the sacrament of Holy Communion, know that you are welcome to receive the body and blood of Jesus as we are blessed with sharing it here. It is not the kingdom made full, but it is an inbreaking. It is a sacrament. It is something that God has given us to help us along the way to bind us with those who are realizing the kingdom fully as it's realized in heaven, and as we are charged to make it continue to unfold uh, with God's grace and God's help here on earth. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
continue with prayer one, page 333. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and holy spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ 
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost seed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.